Oshkosh Media is. Government programming on GovTV, community programming on Life TV, and community radio on Oshkosh FM 101.9. Welcome to the City Manager's Report, a look at city updates and a preview of the next Oshkosh Common Council meeting agenda. Hello and welcome to the City Manager's Report. I'm your host, Andy Radig, and I'm joined today by your Assistant City Manager for the City of Oshkosh, John Fitzpatrick. Uh, John, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me, Andy. All right, thanks for filling in for Mark. Uh, today we'll talk about some municipal news updates and that'll be in the first half of the program. In the second half of the program we'll talk about some agenda highlights from the Tuesday, August 25th Common Council meeting and that will also be shown live on GovTV. Uh, we should also note that there will be a special council meeting on Monday, August 24th being held at the Oshkosh Convention Center with an informational session uh, beginning at 4.30 p.m and the actual meeting uh, consisting of public hearings will begin at 7 p.m. And that also will be carried live on GovTV. And we'll have more details about that uh, coming up a little bit later on. Uh, so John, uh, we can take a look at some items that we have to talk about today. Uh, a lot of things going on. So we always update a little bit about uh, COVID-19 related topics. And uh, I, I know that uh, residents are able to now participate virtually in, in common council meetings. And a future goal is to also include uh, uh, board and commission meetings as well. Right, no, we're happy to be able to provide this option for folks who may not be able to attend in person. Um, and we had our first uh, go of it this last council meeting. I think it was pretty, it went pretty smoothly. Good. So a lot of technology, uh, people were helping, certainly people in Oshkosh Media, our staff there, and information technology. And so I hope for the people that participated uh, remotely, it was a good experience. Mm -hmm. There were some changes that were uh, introduced as a result of this option now. We have our comments at the beginning of the council meeting um, rather than having them interspersed throughout. Okay, that's right. Um, but I think it was good. and. Uh, you know, boards of commissions, that's a future goal for us to try to ex extend this opportunity to those uh, meetings that are televised as well. Mm -hmm. Sure, sure. And if folks are interested in, in joining the meeting virtually, uh, they can check the meeting agenda for details on how to join. And uh, they are still uh, uh, required to register to speak. So that can be done on the city's website as well. And uh, uh, folks can join by video conference or by telephone. So uh, if, if folks don't necessarily have video conferencing technologies, uh, they can also join by phone. As long as they have, I believe, a touch tone or mobile phone. Okay. So Okay. There you go. And, uh, and for those wishing to just simply observe the meeting, uh, they can just tune in any of the platforms that uh, Oshkosh Media provides uh, for, for meeting coverage. So, uh, so that's a new option for folks to join in their uh, local government. Uh, we also wanted to talk about uh, the city's uh, COVID-19 uh, webpage. Uh, we keep updating that with the latest information from your city departments, and we have some updates there. I know we just updated the Oshkosh Public Library and some other, some other areas. So uh, that is the one-stop shop for all of your information regarding city services and how they might be affected uh, relating to COVID-19 and, and how their services are, are being uh, um, updated for you right there. Uh, in addition, we also have a, a, a whole uh, page there that you see of online services that are available provided by the City of Oshkosh. Uh, so those are different options that you can utilize and save you a trip uh, to City Hall and you can also uh, work more efficiently. So. I think, you know, we're pretty pleasantly surprised um, how people have really adapted to the online services. I think they really are um, appreciate the option and um, mm -hmm. we are um, you know pleasantly surprised uh, by some of the comments that we've received. It's like hey we we appreciate the you know this opportunity this is pretty easy and sure. so I think it's worth giving a try. Sure absolutely 
And we also should point out as well that there is a drop box available in the front of City Hall that you see there. Uh, and, and that's also available for folks to drop off payments or uh, also they can uh, deposit their comments for meetings at that location, uh, different things. So, and there's a sign that gives you some more details there. Uh, so that is in front of City Hall and you don't need to, uh, if, if you prefer to have contactless interaction with your uh, conducting your business at City Hall, that is another option available to you. So uh, any more information about that is all available at the city's website and we encourage you to, uh, to take a look there. So uh, we just kind of touched on it briefly a little bit, John. Uh, one of the items that we want to make folks aware of is that there are some uh, changes in regard to services at the Oshkosh Public Library. Right. Um, I know the, the public library is, was certainly anxious to provide more opportunities for patrons to, to utilize their services. So, um, you know, they reopened recently they, ha they, serve, they still have their curbside pickup that's active. Right, that's and, been popular. Yeah, and they've uh, introduced some other things that um, are designed to try to help um, manage the service usage, but also make it safe for folks. Mm -hmm. Right, right. So uh, they're trying to tailor the uh, options primarily for those that are looking to recover from the economic impact of the pandemic. Uh, so, for example, if folks are looking for work, uh, they have in-library computer use available and they have printing, photocopying, device charging, and notary service. Right. So, uh, a lot of different avail uh, services available. Uh, those services are available by appointment only, we should point out. So, right. they need to contact the staff at the library and a library card is not needed. Right. So. No, I think it's a nice, it's certainly a, a, a a well thought out gesture on the part of the library and I think they want to try to do their part to help folks mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. navigate these circumstances to, to the best of their ability. Right, right. So very good. Uh, another topic is the 2021 capital improvement project letters uh, have been sent out to property owners and uh, also the related uh, capital improvement project uh, website uh, web page has also been updated. So uh, this is for areas where there are some improvements being made in roads and, and that sort of thing. Right, exactly. Our capital improvements plan is um, structured whereby we have uh, projects that are scoped out for a variety of years and then we, mm -hmm. we approve the funding year by year. So the capital improvement plan includes uh, a whole variety of things from equipment to um, mm -hmm. infrastructure type developments. And this particular thing that we're t discussing right now, and you touched on at the beginning of the meeting that is gonna take place on the 24th, really is focused on projects where people may need to have dialogue with um, our public works folks about uh, improvements to their road mm -hmm. by their home or by their business resident, business or residence. Sure. Um, so it's just uh, designed to um, be communicative let people know that there's going to be an opportunity for them to contact and, and talk at a formal meeting, certainly mm -hmm. about this if they wish, but that they're by no means restricted to that time. Mm -hmm. They can contact Public Works at any time, and I know we'll be talking about that later on in the second half. That's right, that's right. And also Oshkosh Media has produced a informational program about the capital improvements projects, and that uh, program is available at the Public Works CIP page and it will also be running uh, you can look the, on the schedules uh, for gov TV and you'll be able to find that so uh, informational programs uh, I know that they they did uh, neighborhood informational programs in the right. past but yeah. due to the situation that we have right now um, this program provides all that information in in one one location right so and also uh, letters have been sent out to folks regarding uh, private side lead water service line replacement and uh, those were also mailed recently to property owners that are adjacent to uh, proposed projects. Right, exactly and uh, I think that's something that um, if people aren't familiar with they certainly can um, um, 
take a look at some of the resources that we have on our website as well. Um, but um, it's designed to give people an opportunity to um, contact us and have us perform an inspection to determine um, uh, what material type their water service line is at no charge. And, mm -hmm. That's um, right. So I think it's a good program and it's something that people need to be aware of. I know um, some of the concerning issues associated with Flint, Michigan were in the news recently. I heard that. And, mm -hmm. and you know, we're grateful we don't have a circumstance like that here. Mm -hmm. But it's always good to be aware of what, you know, might be present and, you know, what steps may be possible for you to uh, make changes. Mm -hmm. so. Sure. And I understand also that there might be some reimbursement programs available as well. So that would be worth uh, looking into uh, to get more information about that and uh, uh, potentially have those service lines updated. So some good news, John. Uh, the Oshkosh Fire Department will be receiving some grant dollars. It's my understanding, yeah, that they were able to uh, secure a, um, assistance to firefighters grant, and that's from uh, FEMA. Right. So mm -hmm. I think they're going to be trying to upgrade some of their um, some of their hoses. So right. which is which is always a great need. And, and we're seeing here the old ho hoses that that they're currently using. Uh, but just to give you an idea of what 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 we're talking about for fire hoses, right? Uh, so uh, those will be upgraded, and and I know that the the staff over at the fire department are very uh, excited and and pleased to have the ability to update this this uh, equipment that they absolutely. use. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, speaking of grants, uh, there was also recently an Economic Development Corporation grant uh, that the city received for a uh, quarter of a million dollars. Uh, and uh, that is being used toward redevelopment at the former Gibson Auto Body at uh, 537 North Main Street. Right, it was a grant that we received from the Wisconsin Economic Development Corporation. and. Um, I think this is really going to be an interesting project. I think that um, the developers we've had a good positive experience with certainly and they're interested in trying to um, just uh, focus their energies on Main Street sure. in the downtown area. Mm -hmm. And it's and a unique looking building. It is a unique looking building. Mm -hmm. I think it's, it's, it was a, a, the old Gibson auto body um, building for folks that you know may have an interest in the history of the Mm -hmm. of the building itself and um, you know the architecture is unique and I think that um, it'll be it'll provide an interesting venue for the developers mm -hmm. going forward it sounds like they want to have it uh, be used for social activities so mm -hmm. I think it'll be a, a cool event venue. Mm -hmm. I think so and it's a wonderful spot in downtown Oshkosh um, in the middle of town and, uh, and I know that the plan is to maintain the historical integrity of the building so so that's always great when we can keep those uh, yep. you know, that architecture. But still enhance the existing space. I absolutely. Think that's, that's the idea. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well another item uh, and uh, it's kind of the, the, the times that we're in right now uh, we have virtual ceremonies for many different types of things and Oshkosh Police Department normally also had an awards program and uh, they went virtual this year so uh, uh, that has been, uh, it originally was scheduled in May uh, for their annual awards ceremony and uh, postponed due to the pandemic. Right. Uh, but uh, they felt that it was still very important to honor individuals and uh, to be able to um, give them some credit for the difference that they make in the community. It is absolutely important and you know um, we have many dedicated employees and our folks that work in the police department are certainly no different and um, we're fortunate to have those folks protecting and serving us on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. And um, and I think it's very meaningful. You know, taking the time to say, you know, thanks for doing a good job is, I know as a city employee, it's it, it's not something that you expect, but it's certainly something that you appreciate. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's important for us to recognize folks on a regular basis. So mm -hmm. it doesn't, it's not a big thing. Um, mm -hmm but it, it's certainly an important thing. Sure, so. sure. And Oshkosh Media, you just saw a clip uh, of it right there. Oshkosh Media is assisting in creating that program and it will be available for viewing on the Oshkosh Police Department's Facebook page 
as well as available on Oshkosh Media Gov TV uh, later next week. So be on the lookout for that. All right, and another item, uh, we've been uh, uh, regularly having some POLCO surveys. Uh, and POLCO is a service that the city utilizes for gathering information from residents uh, about various topics. Right. And uh, so there's currently a survey that has been posted regarding uh, community equity and inclusion. And the purpose of that study is to gather information from residents to help us identify strengths and challenges related to equity and inclusion. So, uh, so that has been posted. Uh, 20 questions it consists of, and that survey closes on September 4th. So we encourage folks to, to uh, take a look at that. Absolutely. All right. And uh, the last item that we have on our list today, John, is uh, kind of a, uh, a thing related to Oshkosh Media right here. Uh, so a part of Oshkosh Media is Oshkosh FM, the radio station. And uh, it's also a partnership with the friends of Oshkosh Community Media. And uh, uh, they went on the air with a new transmitter. So that was exciting. And uh, the uh, friends of OCM, uh, were able to provide, uh, pay for the new equipment and installation of the transmitter. And uh, the advantages that this will provide for folks is that uh, the station will be clearer and that there will be new, new features coming soon. And you can see there the uh, tower climbers were up there uh, doing some maintenance and, and uh, adjusting the, the antenna and ensuring that everything was uh, up to snuff up there. So. So uh, everything has been updated and, and uh, with the new transmitter. Uh, and this is a technology update, and it will also provide some more reliability for the, for the radio station. Right, I think um, we talked about it in the past on, on City Manager Report and other programs that mm -hmm. um, we've been able to utilize 101.9 in a variety of different contexts for some of our emergency management communication. And mm -hmm. um, you know, also more importantly, I think it's another way for people to access our government. We um, provide um, simulcast informa uh, programming right, on right. Uh, 101.9 as, mm -hmm. you know, as another way for people to listen when they're in their car, for example, to sure. some of our meetings mm -hmm. and boards and commissions. And we have a lot of people that really enjoy that. But you know, I'd be remiss if I didn't um, you know, thank the friends of OCM right. absolutely for their dedication mm -hmm. to not only this project, but you know they've been partners with the city for a long, long time. And you know, mm -hmm. you and I have been fortunate to have the opportunity to meet some of those people that have been you know dedicated to assisting our mission of opening up city government to the mm -hmm. community and allowing them to participate. Mm -hmm. You know, here at Oshkosh Media in a variety of different ways. So mm -hmm. um, really super fortunate to have uh, them as a partner and uh, to be able to work with them for so many years. Absolutely. And I know that this transmitter project has actually been in the works for a very long time. So uh, that uh, uh, shouldn't be uh, forgotten that it, it's been a project that has, has been a long time in coming. So kind of exciting uh, being able to make some, some updates. Absolutely. All right, John, I think uh, what we'll do at this point is we'll take a quick break and then what we will do is come back after the break and we'll talk about some agenda highlights from the upcoming Tuesday, August 25th Common Council meeting. So stay tuned and we'll be right back.
And welcome back to the City Manager's Report. I'm your host, Andy Radig, joined today by your Assistant City Manager for the City of Oshkosh, John Fitzpatrick. Thanks, thanks for being here, John. Thanks, Andy. And uh, just to uh, recap again, that there will be a special Common Council meeting on Monday, uh, August 24th at the Oshkosh Convention Center. And the topic of that will be uh, public hearings related to uh, capital improvement projects. Uh, there will be a 4.30 p.m. Uh, informational session. Uh, it begins at 4.30 p.m. And the actual meeting will be at 7 p.m. And that will also be televised live on GovTV and on the various platforms that you see on your screen. So just wanted to recap that a little bit for folks. And on Tuesday, August 25th, is the regular Common Council meeting. Uh, begins at 6 p.m. and will also be televised on GovTV. And we have several items we can uh, talk about uh, from the agenda on that meeting, John. And one item relates to, uh, uh, let's see, it's a grant uh, for the police department. And this is to defray costs related to some safety equipment. It is. It's a justice assistance grant that um, we've been fortunate enough to um, be able to receive in the past. And it's my understanding that the funds are going to be used to defray some costs that we have for safety equipment for our folks. Okay. So we, we appreciate. We hopefully will be able to secure that, um, but this, this is just approving the application. Okay, very good. And then we have an ordinance, and uh, uh, this is over by, um, it had been the business called Ye Old Goat and the property has been purchased and will now be rehabilitated for various uses. Right, right. So. Uh, it's my understanding that uh, Zilgis is, who, who's been a, a business partner with, a, with the city for a long, long time, mm -hmm. is um, interested in rehabilitating the site and uh, for a ver variety of uses. So I know um, for people that uh, patronized Ye Old Goat, mm -hmm. they're probably sad to see it go, but mm -hmm. um, Unfortunately, it wasn't able to be rebuilt. Right, right. And it was extensive uh, damage. Right, it was some really extensive damage, and so so um, the roof collapsed due to heavy snow. Right, and that's and, my understanding. Right, and I, I don't think um, they were able to rebuild it in its its current form for a variety of reasons. So um, we're happy to improve that site because it's been in that condition for quite a while, and mm -hmm. and. Um, we know that Zogasis will do a good job with it. So right, right, okay. And then we have another item. Actually, this is exciting. There will be some jazz in the square downtown in downtown Oshkosh coming up this summer, and so we have a special event approval. Right, we haven't had a lot of special events in the city um, because of COVID and the concern that we have about making sure that it's safe for everyone. Um, but I know that. Um, the event organizer is the Business Improvement District, and they've been uh, working with the Winnebago County Health Department to try to construct an event that they thought was um, safe. And it's my understanding that the health department has, you know, tried to do whatever they could to try to make that as safe as possible. So right. socially distancing and so right. forth. It's, yeah. it's planned for 5:30 to 7:30 on September 2nd, and. Um, Wednesdays. Wednesdays, mm -hmm. uh, from September second to the thirtieth of there you September. Go. I'm sorry. No, no problem. And uh, yeah, so there'll be a little jazz on the square, and from five thirty to seven thirty. And I think if people can get out and enjoy that, um, it'll be a nice change. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and that's a great venue for something like that. It so, is. So that'll be great. Uh, another special event uh, relating to some music, uh, and this is over at the Menominee Nation Arena. Right, and this is another. Um, an event that has a, a safety focus. Mm -hmm. It's um, it's going to be a drive-in concert series. Okay. So, and it's my understanding it's going to be held in their parking lot. It's um, set up uh, on September 11th, 12th, 18th, 19th, and 26th. Mm -hmm. um, they have some pretty well-known folks that are going to be um, providing um, that th those concert uh, um, performances. Um, Aaron Lewis, uh, Uncle Cracker, I think, um, uh, a, a group called Absolute Queen. So mm -hmm. it sounds pretty interesting. It's my understanding that those are going to be held um, from 7 to 10.30 p.m. So they're not uh, super late. So hopefully people can take advantage of those and um, enjoy them in a safe, 
sort of circumstance. Right, right. Well, it's exciting to see some special events coming up. So yeah. that's great. Right. And then we have another item uh, relating to the council recently had a, a budget uh, discussion. And uh, so this is uh, relating to that, is that correct? Actually, yeah, um, there's, there's a couple items on the agenda um, that focus on um, revising our fund balance policy. The Long Range Finance Committee um, met recently and talked about that. And, um, and also in the future, um, uh, we're gonna be budgeting for our capital improvement plan, but on the agenda, we're gonna be talking about approving the plan itself. Mm -hmm. And we discussed both of those um, on August 19th. Uh, we had a budget workshop and talked about how important it was to try to structure our policies so we have a consistent approach, especially to debt and a variety of other things mm -hmm. um, that uh, finance director uh, Russ Van Gompel is trying to put in place for us. So I think the council is going to welcome these, uh, certainly the policy recommendations from the long range finance. And also I think there's been a significant dialogue about the capital improvement plan too. Mm -hmm. there, there was also a little bit of uh, discussion on the 19th about that. So mm -hmm. the idea is it's a little bit of a change from the past. Right. It's more of a planning document now. Mm -hmm. And then the council will certainly have the opportunity to approve the budgetary component mm -hmm. later in the fall. Okay. So, okay. And I understand too, John, if you might be able to expand a little bit. I know that the, the sequencing of some of these meetings and discussions has changed a little bit this year. Is that correct? It has a little bit. Uh, Finance Director Van Gompel is really using a model that um, he's familiar with that is um, set up in such a way where it's uh, um, accredited um, or seeking uh, an accredited like uh, format. So I think he's, he's, he's bringing a lot of great ideas to the city um, and working with the, the good staff that we have in place mm -hmm. um, and just providing um, uh, a wealth of experience uh, to those folks and also to our systems, sure, systems and structures. So um, we're fortunate to have him here doing that. Mm -hmm. He's doing a great job. He is. Mm -hmm. And then we have uh, also some upcoming uh, meetings as well, and we have an affordable housing study uh, uh, discussion on September 8th at 5 p.m. Right, um, Community Deve Development Director Alan Davis has been working on that um, you know, at the request of council for some time. It's been difficult to try to schedule uh, um, a circumstance where we can have that done safely, mm -hmm. uh, but you know, we have that all set up now uh, for September 8th. It's going to begin at 5 p.m. Okay. And I mm -hmm. think that'll be interesting for folks to, to tune into. Sure. Mm -hmm. Can get more information there. So, John, I think that's what we have uh, for our discussion today. Okay. So we had quite a bit of uh, different items. And uh, thanks again for joining us and for, for uh, filling in for Mark today. My pleasure, Andy. Thank you. All right. Very good. So, again, the next Oshkosh Common Council meeting, uh, the, the main meeting that we've been talking about, the second half of the show will be on Tuesday, August 25th. And uh, that begins at 6 p.m. And you can watch that live on GovTV, uh, Spectrum Channel 10. UVerse Channel 99 and streaming on YouTube and OshkoshMedia.org. Uh, also wanted to make mention again that there will be a special council meeting on Monday, August 24th at 7 p.m. at the Oshkosh Convention Center. Uh, and that meeting will feature public hearings uh, regarding those public works projects that we discussed a little bit earlier. And there will be a public informational session prior to that meeting that begins at 4.30 p.m. And again, that's at the Oshkosh Convention Center. So uh, you can always tune in for these meetings on GovTV, and you can also listen live on Oshkosh FM 101.9, which is also online and on the TuneIn Radio app for mobile devices. So thanks again, everyone, for watching the City Manager's Report, and we'll be back again in two weeks with another new program. Take care, everyone.